So tonight I want to talk to you guys all about what do we do with hurt. See, all of us hurt. All of us are different in many different ways, but in one way we're the same, and that's the fact that we all hurt. We all hurt, whether it be physical, mental, whatever, whatever it may be, we all hurt. And so tonight my message is called, The Battle is Not Yours to Fight. Can we pray? Let's pray. God, thank you so much that we can be here tonight. God, I thank you that though the buses were not running, Lord, we, brought, we all got here safely. Lord, we're all here. And God, we know that because we are here, you want to speak to us. God, I pray that you would help me to speak this message with confidence, Lord, and with humor. Lord, let me not be boring and let these lives be changed. In Jesus' name, we all said amen. Amen. See, see, we all hurt. In different ways, right? We all hurt in different ways. There's, there's physical hurt. There's mental hurt. There's emotional hurt. There's even spiritual hurt. There's this hurt. We all hurt. And so the question I want to ask tonight and kind of deal with is what do we do? What do I do with hurt? So I started thinking about what I do with hurt. And what I do with hurt. I, I remember the story. I was about 12 years old. I was playing hockey at the time. And uh, if, if you're into sports, if, you, if you're into hockey, you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But for some reason, hockey players always need perfect tape on their stick. And, yeah, see, hockey players are like, yeah, it's true. And I don't know, maybe soccer players need, like, perfect laces on their cleats. I don't know. I didn't play soccer for very long. Maybe, like, dancers need the perfect makeup. I don't know. I never danced. That wasn't my thing. I can dance, and I'm good. But... I won't prove it to you tonight. But I played hockey. So hockey, I'm 12 years old, and I know because I've watched the superstars on the TV that I need perfect tape. So every practice, every game, I'm ready to tape my stick. Now, I made a crucial mistake as a a kid. I, I was lazy one night. I'm embarrassed to say it, but I taped over old tape crucial mistake. Don't do that. Don't do that. So when it came time to retape over the tape that was over tape, I had to get two layers of tape off. Now my 12-year-old fingers were not very strong at the time, although they're chubby, they're not strong. And so my 12-year-old fingers could not get the tape off the stick. So I decided, oh yeah, I have a pocket knife in my room. I'll use the pocket knife to get the tape off. Now, The reason I was allowed to do this at 12 years old was because I was home alone. My mom and dad weren't home. My sister wasn't home. I was all by myself getting ready for game time. So I need to get this tape off. So I decided I got got a little pocket knife. It's got my name on it. You guys have a pocket knife with your name on it? A few of you guys? Yeah. I don't know why. Why? Like nobody needs a pocket knife, but we all have them, and they all have our name on it. I've never seen one that doesn't have a name. It's weird. Anyways. I grab this pocket knife, I pull the knife out, and I start to to hack away at the tape. Now, I remembered, because I'm not that big of an idiot, that I'm supposed to do what I can to always cut away from me. So I start cutting away from me, and all of a sudden, as I'm cutting away, the knife slips off, and I hit my hand. Now, I'm 12 years old, I'm just trying to get ready for hockey, I'm home alone, and now my hand is cut. And my hand is cut to a point where if I move my hand like this, I can see stuff moving. <laughs> Disgusting. I can, I can see. It's not a big cut, but it was a deep cut. And if you don't know me that well, I'm going to let you in on a secret. I hate blood. I hate your blood. I hate my blood. I hate TV blood. I hate fake blood. I just, I don't like blood. I can't watch Grey's Anatomy. There's too much blood. I can't, I, I don't like blood. I ain't about that life. Some of you guys are going to be doctors. You could take care of me because I ain't taking care of you. I don't like blood. So I start to freak out. I start to lose my mind. I got blood everywhere. It's running down my hand. It's on the floor, and I start to panic. Okay? I start to panic. And, and this, is, this is a little bit into my brain. This is what I do. I'm 12 years old. I, I run because I know i got to get something on it. So I start to run, but it hurts, so I start shaking my hand. I'm running down my hallway at home, shaking my hand in front of me, and it looks like a murder scene. There's blood on the walls. There's blood on the floor. There's blood everywhere from a little, like it's a one-inch cut. And there's blood. I'm shaking my hand. And finally, I get to the doctor. I call my neighbor up, get to the doctor, get a stitch. And I realized, what do I do with hurt? I freak out. That's what I do with hurt. That's what I do with hurt. Just this last weekend, Last weekend, we had May Long. 
May Long, y'all have a good May Long? I had a good May Long. Went to the lake a couple of times. Went to the lake a couple of times. And on Monday, Monday just this week, a few days ago, Monday, I think it's four days ago. I'm not good at math, though. Four days ago, Monday, I was out at the lake, and uh, a, a, a friend of mine, a few friends of mine have a, have a lake property out there, and they got some boats. And so we were, we were doing the whole, like, got to get ready for the summer. So we were putting the dock out. We were putting the boat lifts in, uh, in the water. And so day's going great. Uh, they all have these things uh, called waders. I think they're waders, hip waders. You guys ever seen these things? It's like a big, it's like a big uh, rubber boot. And, and so, like, the bottom portion is an actual rubber boot, but then the rest of it you, like, clip up to your waist, and it keeps you waterproof so you don't get wet. And on the bottom, there's, like, shoes. So they all had hip waders, and uh, I didn't. So I did my best to stay out of the water. Uh, it's cold right now. And uh, so I tried to stay out. So for the dock part, it was easy. Stayed out of the water, helped out a little bit. Now it came time to move the big boat lift, and I, I knew, okay, I got to get in the water. I got to get my feet wet, and uh, we just got to do it. But... Because I'm not that smart, I don't think I should put shoes on. I should put something on uh, on my feet just like the rest of these guys have. So I go out into the water, and I'm helping out, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm pushing this boat lift around. And we're, we're making great time. We're doing really well. I'm not going to lie to you. I was impressed with, our, with us, and uh, I've never done it before. So it was, it was the fastest time that I've ever had uh, putting, putting this stuff out in the water. And so we're, we're getting it done, and, and I've got my, I got my foot planted like this, and I'm ready to push on this thing, and all of a sudden, my foot squishes into the sand, and like I can feel in my whole body, like a, like a big cut just happened on the bottom of my foot. I don't, I, to this day, I don't know what cut my foot. I don't know how it happened. I don't know if it was a seashell or if it was Loch Ness Monster. I don't know what it was, but something cut the bottom of my foot, like probably like three or four inches, and like pretty deep. So I panicked because, again, I don't like blood, right? So I push on this thing. I can feel it cut. It was like the kind of cut that I could like hear. You know what I mean? Oh, it was disgusting. I, I, again, like if I think about it too much, I might, I might throw up like legitimately. I, yeah, it's bad. So I, I, I pushed on it and immediately I'm like, boys, I got to go. So I, I, I got my way to the dock. I lifted myself up and I'm kind of like doing this thing, right? Because I don't want to get sand in the cut because then, you know, I don't want to die. So... I make my way, and my wife and all the rest of the, the wives and the babies are up on the deck, and, I, and I'm, I'm hopping through the grass to, to get to them, and there's blood, like, just following me. And finally, I get to the deck, and the deck's got, like, eight or so stairs, so I grab my foot, and I start to jump up the deck. And in my mind, I'm like, don't look down, don't look down, don't look at your foot, don't look at your hand, don't look at your foot, don't look at your hand. And I get to the top, and I make a crucial mistake. Yeah, because I'm dumb. I look at my hand. My hand has got, like, a pool of blood in it, and the entire top of my foot is red. And I'm like, uh-oh. Oh, I'm about to die. I don't like this blood thing. So my wife hooks me up. I get it all cleaned up. So if I'm a little bit hobbly tonight, you know that's why. But what do I do with her? I freak out, and I call on my wife. Those are the two things that I do with hurt. See, the reality is, is these stories are all physical hurt. Physical hurt, but the most, most of the time, I'd say, the most hurt we deal with isn't physical. It's probably emotional. It's probably mental, right? Physical hurt, you just get a Band-Aid, put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it, burns for a second, and give it a few days, and you're all good. But mental and emotional pain, mental and emotional hurt's a little bit different. And so this brought me to a story in the Bible, a very common story you guys probably all have heard about. It's, it's basically about two people. David and Goliath. Y'all heard about this? David and Goliath. Let me, set the, let me set the scene for you. On one side, there's the, there's the Israelite people. This is God's people. This is God's army, okay? On one side is the Israelite people. On the other side is the Philistine people. These are the enemies of the Israelites. They don't like each other. They want to fight. It's like, uh, it's like Pepsi versus Coke. Who's a Pepsi person? Okay. Who's a Coke person? Okay. What, uh, what family is ginger ale in? Canada Dry. Coke? Y'all aren't going to help me. Whatever family that's in is my favorite. Uh, I'm just a ginger ale person. I don't know. My tummy never hurts, so that's good. 
Anyways, anyways, on one side, Israelites, on the other side, the Philistine people. And what's happening is that they go out and they draw their battle lines. So they get their armies lined up against one another, and they're basically just like. That's what they're doing. They're just standing there. Not, they're not even doing anything. They're just standing there. And then out of the Philistine side, you hear the ground start to shake. And this giant... He's over nine feet tall. That's like, that's like the size of me right now. Off that ground, not this ground. I'm not nine feet tall. Give me a break. Nine feet tall giant comes out, and he starts calling out the Israelite people. What's up? I, that's what I think he would say. You suck. Like, nice burns, but still burns. You know what I mean? Like, nothing really hurtful, but, like, enough that's like, come on, man. Why did you say that to me? So, if, Goliath comes out. Goliath is a mammoth. He's huge. He, he's coming out every single day to taunt Israel. Goliath's over nine feet tall. Goliath's helmet and his chest plate of armor weigh 125 pounds. Some of y'all don't even weigh 125 pounds. It's like wrapping you around another dude. But that's his, that's his armor. This guy's massive. He's got multiple weapons that are like heavy. He's got a shorter dude in front of him that's holding his shield for him because he's like, I'm a giant. Get and he's like, okay, because <laughs> I'm trying to die today. So Goliath comes out every single day and starts to taunt Israel, starts to make fun of Israel, starts to say, like, you suck, your God's a loser, he can't help you at all, and he starts going after Israel. And this is a lot like what happens to us. This is a lot like what happens to you and I. Our hurt comes out to our battlefield starts to talk to us, start to say things to us. Maybe it's somebody that said something to you. Maybe it's a situation that happened to you. I don't know what it was. But, but your giant, your hurt comes to the battlefield and starts talking to you. And then you do, and I do, what Israel did. If you're reading this story, they run away. They're like, ah. I can't run because of my foot. Ah. They run away. They go and they hide. The Bible says they're terrified and dismayed about this giant that's in front of him. And that's what you and I do with our hurt. We get hurt and we turn around and we run and we hide. We try to get away from this hurt. See, this hurt that Israel's dealing with, Goliath, this giant they're dealing with was relentless in what he was doing. Relentless. Bible says for 40 days, 40 days, Goliath came to the center of the battlefield and called them out taunted them, mocked them, talked trash to them, messed with their heads for 40 days. And not only 40 days, but twice a day. So if my math's correct, that's 80 times that they heard their hurt saying something to them. Their hurt was relentless. Goliath was relentless. So you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. I know some of you right now in your mind, you're going, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. So that thing that that dad said, or that thing that mom said, or that person that hurt me like that, that person I trusted a little bit with this, that person I confided in, that person I gave a bit of my heart to that turned around and, and, and broke my heart, that person that I trusted in that turned around and broke my trust, that, per that hurt is ringing in your head right now. And that hurt rings 40 days in a row, twice a day, 80 times you think about that hurt. It's relentless. Hurt is relentless. See, I don't know what your specific hurt looks like. But I know because I have hurts that our hurts can look a lot like a giant. Like it's too hard to take on by yourself. Like it's too hard to conquer. See, hurt doesn't know when to leave us alone. It doesn't. Hurt doesn't know when to leave us alone. It's the first thing you think of when you wake up. It's the, it's the, the thing you think about all day long. Oh, that person did this. It's, it's, the, it's in your mind. It's that thing that you think about before you go to sleep. And then you wake up again, and that hurt is ringing through your head. It doesn't know when to leave us alone. Your hurt doesn't know when to shut up. It's that voice that's talking to you in your mind. It's that voice that is continually ringing through your head. It's that negativity that surrounds your every thought. It's that statement that somebody made about you maybe years ago that you can't forget today. Hurt doesn't know when to back down. Hurt doesn't know when to back down. It's relentless. It's like Goliath. It's out there. It's 40 days. It's 80 times. It's out in your mind at all times. It's there. It doesn't know when to back. It doesn't know when to stop. It's constantly in your face. And finally, hurt has 
no boundaries. See, your hurt will go as far as you will let it go. Your hurt has no boundaries. It has no boundaries whatsoever. Your hurt will say as much as you will let it say. And your hurt will take as much as you will let it take. It'll take friendships. It'll take family. It'll take opportunities from you. Your hurt will take as much as you will let it. So how do we stop? How do we stop this hurt? What do we do with hurt? Back to the battlefield. Israel's on one side. Philistines on the other. Goliath's in the middle. Goliath's standing there talking to Israel, taunting them, mocking them, making fun of them, calling them out, mocking God the whole bit. He's out there right now, nine, all nine feet of him. He's out there. And he's talking. Your hurt is in the battlefield right now. He's talking. That statement, that situation, it's in the battlefield talking. It's out there doing damage right now. Goliath standing there. We're standing on the other side. We're ready to run. We're ready to hide. We're ready to, to, to dip out of this thing. We're scared. We're terrified. We don't know what to do. And in the midst of all this happening, in the midst of Israel standing there like, what do we do with this giant? What do we do with this hurt? How do we stop it? I've tried and I've tried. I've done what I know to do. How do we stop this thing? In the midst of the giant mocking Israel, a little shepherd boy shows up. A little shepherd boy shows up. He's not in the army. No, no, no. He's not a warrior. His brothers are, but he's not. He was sent by his dad from home with, with pizza pops in hand like, yo, bros, you ain't eating very good out here. So pop sent me with some pizza pops and I hook you up. Eat good. And he shows up on the scene. He's a shepherd boy. He watches sheep. You know how easy that is? It's like this. Sheep are dumb. They are. They eat. Then they sleep. And then they eat again. Then they sleep. And then you shave them and make a sick jacket out of them. Then they eat and sleep again. He's a shepherd boy. He's not a warrior. But he shows up. He shows up in the midst of this hurt, screaming at his nation. Screaming at his people. Screaming about his God. And he shows up. And there's hurt standing on one side and nobody standing on the other. They've done all that they know. They've done everything. So David, he gets fed up. And he's like, have you guys heard what this guy's saying? Yeah, man, isn't he scary? Have you heard the things that he's talking about? Our God? Yeah, but have you seen how tall he is? He's pretty tall. But David's like, have you, how long has this been going on for? How long has this giant, how long has this hurt been screaming in your face? Ah, uh, it's about 40 days. 40 what? 40 days? Yeah, and David actually, it's funny you said that like that. Uh, he comes out twice a day. What? 80 times? This guy's mocked you like this? 80 times this hurt's been ringing through your head? It's got to stop. So David goes like, guys, I got this. David grabs a few rocks, grabs his sling, steps onto the battlefield. Steps onto the battlefield and let's check out. What's said? It's in 1 Samuel. He, speaking of Goliath, he looked at David over and saw that he was little more than a boy. This is the nice part, though. Glowing with health and handsome. And this is the funny part. And he despised him. I don't know if that's the reason he despised him, because he's a nine foot tall. I've never, never mind. I'm not going to say that. He said to David, moving on. He said to David, Am I a dog? That you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin. But I, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the army of Israel, who you have defied. This day... The Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head. My gosh. 
David's just a shepherd boy, man. David's sent by his dad. David's sent by his dad. David steps onto the battlefield. Goliath's standing there like, really? You? See, the armies have made this thing where whoever wins the 1v1 battle, the loser's whole nation would become slave to the other. So Goliath is big and scary, and that's smart. If, if, if I'm a nation, I'm going to send the big scary guy out, the guy who wins every battle, the guy who beats people up, the guy who kills everyone that comes into contact. I'm sending that guy out. Israel, they send a shepherd boy with a stick and a few stones. They send David. So when Goliath is saying, like, really? You're going to send you? With a stick? What am I, a dog? It kind of makes sense. But David goes out and says, like, dude, hey, Hurt, I'm sick and tired of you tormenting me. I'm sick and tired of you always in my head. I'm sick and tired of hearing your voice twice a day for the last, whatever, month and a half. I'm sick and tired of it. And it ends today. And how it's going to end is God. It's God. So your hurt is ringing through your head for 40 days. Your hurt 80 times is talking to you. Your hurt that has no boundary. Your hurt that has no care for you. And you and I have been dealing with this so wrong. We turn around, we run, we hide. But tonight I came to tell you that I know there's a hurt. I know there's a giant. But I need you to know tonight, Risen, that there's a David coming for you. There might be a Goliath standing in your battlefield. There might be a hurt that you're going face to face with. But I'm telling you, the battle's not yours to fight. <laughs> David comes into this battlefield. David comes in and with one rock, one stone in his sling. Shoots a rock and Goliath hits him right in the forehead. Rock sinks into his head. Kills him on the spot. David rolls up like a real G. Takes Goliath's sword. Cuts off his head. What's up? What? You don't, have to, you don't have to fight your fear. You don't have to fight your hurt. You don't have to fight your giant alone. There's a David and his name is Jesus. David was sent by his father to rescue a nation. Guess who else was? Jesus. Jesus was sent by his father to rescue you and I from the things that you and I are scared of, things that you and I are hiding from, that we've turned our back on, that we've ran the other way. You don't have to fight this fear alone because Jesus did for you. I know it's intimidating. I know your hurt's intimidating. I know that that giant's intimidating, but nothing's too big for God. Nothing's too big for Jesus. Nothing's too bad for Jesus. Nothing's too broken for Jesus. Nothing's too far for Jesus. David ran onto the battlefield. David ran onto the battlefield declaring that God, what does he say? He says, I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the army of Israel, whom you defy this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. It's not going to be me. It's going to be God. And tonight I really believe, I truly believe that tonight we can surrender our hurt. We can surrender the things that are tormenting us, the things that we can't get out of our head, the things that we wake up thinking about, the things we go to sleep thinking about. I believe tonight that we can give them to God and we no longer have to live the way we came in this room living. Let's look at Job again. Job 36, 15. It says, but those who suffer, he delivers in their suffering. He delivers them in their suffering. He speaks to them in their affliction. He speaks to them while it's happening. He's not waiting. God's not waiting to speak to you. God's not waiting to change your life that you get, your, get everything, get all your ducks in a row, get it all cleaned up, get it all fresh and tidy. No, no, no. God's going to speak to you during that. 
He wants to speak to you right now. He wants to change your life right now. You don't have to clean up your act. God already loves you. The cleaning up will happen because you love God back. But God's not waiting for you to clean up your life right now. David ran onto the battlefield and in one motion killed this giant. And Jesus wants to do the same for you tonight. There's people in here hurting. There's people in here that have things have happened to you that are unimaginable. Things that are things that have happened to you that you don't talk to anyone about. It's bottled up inside and you, you've tried to deal with it on your own. And tonight you don't have to do that anymore. You can offer it to the God who loves you. You can offer it up to the God who sent his one and only son to die on a cross to pay for your sins. You don't have to do this alone. So tonight I want to pray two prayers with you tonight. The first one is for anybody who's hurting. That you want to give some hurt. You want to give that baggage. You want to give that weight to God tonight. It could be emotional pain. It could be physical pain. It could be, it could be mental pain. It could even be sexual pain. It could be hurt that has come from your past. Hurt maybe that's right now in your present. Or maybe it's hurt that you know you're going home to. I don't know what it is. But tonight I believe that God can change your life in one motion right here, right now. So if we could bow our heads, if we could close our eyes. So between just you and God right now, it's not about your friends beside you, not about the, the crew behind you. It's not about that. If we could close our eyes, bow our heads. If you're in here tonight and you say, Adam, I've been dealing with hurt on my own. And I still got it. it can't, I, I can't seem to get it to go away. I can't seem to stop thinking about it. I can't seem to, to get it off my back. And you want to pray with me here tonight. If you could just raise your hand real quick. Just raise your hand. If you've got hurts, if you've got pains that you need to to release and give to God. You can put your hands down. I'm just going to pray real quick. God, I thank you so much that you sent Jesus. No, 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 I'm just going to pray this one. We'll pray, we'll pray together in a sec. God, I thank you that you sent Jesus to do what we couldn't do. God, that you sent your one and only son to come to this earth to pay for our sins, that we could, we could confide in you, we could come back to you, we could bring our cares to you, God. Thank you that in your word you say you care. We can cast our care onto you because you care about us. I thank you, God, that you care for us. And because you care for us, you're willing to do everything for us. So, God, I just ask that right now you take the hurts of the students, you take the hurts of this room off the shoulders of us. We can't do this alone, God. We rely on you, Lord. We need you to move, Jesus. And there's people in here tonight. There's people here tonight who have never given their lives to Christ. Jesus came when he died on the cross and he paid for your sins. You don't have to carry the burden, the shame, the guilt, the weight of all of that. You don't need to carry that alone. You do things in your life that you feel like nobody could love you or maybe you, you, you've never felt real love. And that's Jesus. Jesus is love. God is love. And some of you here tonight need to make a decision. Maybe you've heard about this before. Maybe you never have in your life. But tonight you need to make a decision that says, God, I'm going to put you at the center of my life. God, I'm going to put you first place in my life. I'm going to put myself second. I'm going to put you first. Some of you need to make that decision here tonight. And I believe your life can be changed forever. So again, with head bowed and eyes closed, not a single person looking around. Y'all can flirt later. All the people laughing are the ones that are flirting. All the ones laughing now are the ones that they know their friends are flirting. <laughs> Heads bowed, eyes closed. If you're in here tonight, and you say, tonight, God, tonight I need to make a decision to make you first place. On the count of three, I'm just going to ask you to slip your hands up. Jesus paid for your sin. He came to this earth and he died for you. If that's you tonight, one, two, three, stick your hands up. Stick your hands up. There's people across this room, you can put your hands back down. This is the one you're going to pray after me. Say, God, thank you so much that you sent your son to die on a cross to pay for my sin. Today I declare I will no longer live my old life, but I'll live a life with you at the center. Jesus, thank you so much. I love you. 
In Jesus' name we said, amen. Amen, risen.